And this place is marked with the fact that we've been fasting and praying. I sense it. I know you do. Thank you for that. And I want to continue under the, the theme, avoiding the danger of appearance-driven Christianity. We know we can't be perfect, but we can be real. I want to talk today under this subtitle, The Best Version of You. I believe that for you. I believe that for myself. I know that it won't be easy. I know it won't be quick. But by what the Bible teaches us, we can be at our best. Good place for an amen. We don't have to be mediocre. We don't have to, to cycle continually through struggle and dysfunction. We can break out and go season to season and glory to glory. Come on, church. Let's go for it today. Engage the word and let's learn and grow. Philippians chapter 2, verse 12 says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you've always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Can you say amen to that? We're looking at our part and God's part today. The apostle of grace who wrote this, the apostle Paul, who said it's by grace through faith that we're saved. It's not of works. It is simply by the unconditional love of God, the sacrifice of Jesus, that we can be forgiven and reconciled to God. But Paul is not contradicting his message of grace when he tells us here, now that you're saved, work out your salvation. To be a new creation in Christ, it takes the unconditional love and grace of Jesus. To be transformed, what we call progressive sanctification, as in I'm still growing, I'm still being formed into the image of Christ, that takes my partnership and participation with the power of God at work in me to become all that he saved me to become. So he would say in Ephesians 4, put off the old, put on the new. He would tell us in Galatians, crucify the flesh and grow the fruit of the spirit. You're putting on and putting off, that's our part. We're growing, we are, we are part of that cultivating uh, effort through which God works to transform us into those people he wants us to be. Look with me at Luke 14, verse 28. This is so helpful. Suppose one of you wants to build a tower. Won't you first sit down and estimate the cost to see if you have enough money to complete it? The tower is a metaphor for your life. He's saying, you want to build a life, and he's coming from the position that you do. He is supposing that now that you know him, you want to build the great life like a tower as an illustration of your life. You want to go for it. So he's saying, will you count the cost, and then will you be willing to pay that price in your partnership in the tower, which is your life, to be built? I want to break this down today, I pray that you would make some notes. Let's start with this question. Will you make a decision about the life you want? Will you make that decision about the life you want? I'm saying this in the context of being a Christian, that you're looking at now that you know Jesus, what should that look like? Here's the way to add to it. How do you wanna be remembered? And when you think about that and you start capturing a vision and that idea of that tower that which is your life, then we want to guard against the idea of a certain kind of life versus the reality of that life. What do I mean? I like the version of me that's 15 pounds lighter than I am right now. But I like the idea more than I like the reality of doing what it takes to be that person. And in church, we don't wanna just affirm the idea of transformation. We wanna then yield and surrender to the process and the work of transformation. If we don't 
step in here, then the, our gathering becomes inspiration, and God wants it to be inspirational, but he has gathered us today so that we can be transformed. Can you say amen? Come on, that we can be changed, that we can be shaped into that person that he wants us to be. Now, let's put a bottom line here. The choices you make today and are making today are the indicators of the life you're building and the future you're creating. So if I want, I see how I wanna be remembered, and if I'm making choices today that aren't in alignment, then I'm not building that future. I'm not building that person, I'm not building that tower. I just have an idea of that tower. So we are going to, here it is, count the cost. A fresh look at what it takes in our part of being transformed. Here's what happens. It keeps me from seeing grace as a loophole. Here it is. Grace is not a loophole around the discipline and determination that will be necessary to live out the life God created you to live. By grace, we are saved. And now we give ourselves in surrender to spiritual disciplines so that we can be transformed. There's not the opportunity to be the best version of you apart from the discipline, the disciplining ourselves, the, the correction, the change that the word wants to bring. I want to obliterate any thought that says, well, he saved me and it's all him. If he wants to change me, here, I'm available, as if I have nothing to do. There's prayer. There's a devotional life. There's being in community. There's identifying areas of change. I'm going to go to financial peace. I'm going to go to sexual integrity, living free. I'm going to go learn about resiliency. I'm going to give. God won't pick you up and put you in those groups. You have to partner with the power in community to grow and to heal. Come on, give the Lord a praise. We are a church. We are a church. That means we're living and breathing and growing and we're going to be healthy because we refuse to just have an idea of the kind of life we're saved to live. We want the reality of that life and we're willing, here it is, what we want will be followed by what it takes. What we want will be followed. I'm gonna do what it takes to be the person that God wants me to be. This delivers me from looking at all those areas in my life where I have wanted things, but I didn't want what was required to achieve it. This is saying I have counted the cost. I know this will not be easy, but I'm not going to cash in my future for temporary pleasure. I'm gonna decide that there's something in my life worth more than temporary pleasure. See, the imagery is that we would do it and, and that the Lord is for us and we know that the devil is going to be at work to try and stop us, but God will help us. There was a time in my life I ate donuts every day. I kid you not, every day. I went by a donut shop and have you ever had a favorite donut shop and you just thought no other place can make them just like this place? That was that place for me. And the same people were in there at the same time every day. We all had our, well, we're just enjoying that sugar. Uh, and so this guy that used to eat donuts every day, he's in the donut shop, but he's not eating. I said, what are you doing? He said, I've quit eating donuts. I said, why are you here? He goes, I'm just smelling them. <laughs> and I thought, you know, I actually respect that because here's the thing. You got to start somewhere. It could be that days later he would just drive and stay in his car in the parking lot and look inside. And then days later, maybe he'd just drive by and just think about those donuts. And then maybe the time comes where he's not even driving by. Are you seeing what I'm saying? That change is a process, but do you see where that person was partnering with an elevated desire? that okay, I, I want to elevate desire, I don't want to do this anymore, but I've got a partnership, 
in the kind of power available so that I can actually be a different person. Now, it is just important to know that on this journey, none of us are perfect, but we can be real and we can be surrendered. And I, I say that because at now almost 57 years old, there are still things in my life that need to be transformed to the image of Christ that I was dealing with years ago. And if you notice the same thing about you, then don't look at failure as final. Look at it as feedback. And let's get back up and let's move on. And if, you know, there are some people who it's almost like they're waiting for you to crash and burn. Hey, you will crash and burn. We all will, but get back up. Because when you get back up, people will respect you. And when you walk on, people will admire you. And when you walk ahead, people will need you. Because we need those people that confronted their failure in the grace of God. And they got back up by the grace of God and yielded to the transforming power. Come on, don't let 2023 be a repeat of 2022. The only way I get a new future is if I'm made new. The changing of the calendar does nothing. I have to change in order for there to be change in my future. I believe we've got a church that's ready to do more than just embrace the idea. Come on, we're going for growth and healing through true discipleship. Now, you say, well, I, I, need, I need more here. Okay, so let's just place it here. It's hard to be the best version of ourselves. And I want you to know that being a Christian isn't easy. Getting saved is a choice from the heart, and that work was done by Jesus. But being who you are saved to be that is not easy. And don't ever filter the Bible as if now that you're saved, it will be. That's not the human experience. Jesus never put that out there as a way that it works. That's why he, Jesus himself used words like, you want to follow me? Then it's going to be radical. You want to follow me? It'll be the best It'll be, it, it is the only place where you're going to really experience life. But it will require you to crucify your flesh, to take up your cross, take up this new relationship, and follow. I'm the potter, you are the clay. And it is not going to be comfortable. It is not going to be easy. But if you will yield to this, it'll be the highest, it'll be the best. It'll be the best version of you. And I didn't save you to mediocrity. I didn't save you to continual compromise. I saved you to be more than a conqueror. I saved you to be an overcomer. Can we embrace that? Embrace the hope of that. Embrace the potential of that. So he says in verse 13, as you work out your salvation with fear and tremble, it's God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good pleasure. The kind of work in me by God will affect my will and my actions so that there's transformation to walk out the good purposes of God. When it says God works, that's his authority at work in you, the authority of God. Here is a paragraph on that authority that I read. I want to put it in front of you. Perhaps the most notable characteristic of Jesus' ministry as observed by others was the authority with which he taught and ministered. From the nature of his teaching to the manner in which he drove out evil spirits with a word, Jesus' use of authority is what set him apart from other prophets, teachers, and religious leaders of his day. No one like Jesus. And what marked his life different than anyone else is they would hear him teach and say, there's an authority that we've never experienced. They would watch the miracles of blind eyes, sicknesses healed, demon possession broken off of people. 
They would watch the feeding of the 5,000. There was an authority. And that's the authority that he's talking about here in Philippians 13, 2.13, that is at work in you. You're partnering with that kind of power. Now, do you see the balance? It's not all on you to change. You can't change yourself. But if you partner with God, this is the power that will be at work in you so that you do transform into that person you want to be and that God has saved you to be. This authority that is at work in you, it's going to confront our biggest challenge. What's the chief barrier and influence hindering our experience of change? It's sin. The influence of sin. The power of sin. It is sin in its various forms, and it's the enemy, the devil. The devil, according to the book of James, is your arch enemy, and he looks at your life and the season you're in, and he knows exactly how to set a strategy to defeat you. It's like he watches over your life, and he's not going to use something right now that would have worked in a previous season, but not in this season. Hey, everybody, we're in a war. This is a straight-up war for your soul, for your future, for your victory, for your family. This is straight-up war. There's nothing easy about it. But it is completely possible to not live in this suppression and oppression and cycles of dysfunction and defeat. It is possible by the Spirit and the Word. Though it's not easy, you are a winner in this battle. I encourage you with that. You, you, but the only way that I overcome sin in its various forms and the work of the devil is a superior power. And the surpassing power that's at work in you and me is the authority of Jesus. These police officers that you see at our services and throughout the community, they are representatives of a greater authority. They carry that authority of a department that is over them. And so because they are representatives of that authority, they're even dressed in such a way that speaks to us that they are that authority. They have a badge, a uniform. And in order to keep order, if necessary, they even have weapons so that that authority can be exercised in order to keep the peace. You and I have been given the authority of Jesus. The badge is the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed for you and me so that our redemption is not purchased with silver and gold, but with the shed blood. I'm talking about the precious blood. I'm talking about the blood that has power. I'm talking about the sinless life of Jesus that when he gave his life by shedding his blood, it didn't just cover sin, it cleansed sin and it defeated sin and it defeated the devil, and it took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. And you, in the spiritual realm, as a believer, have a badge. You are marked by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are in a uniform. It is called the armor of God, listed in Ephesians 6, where there's truth and peace and clarity, and faith. And then you have been given weapons. Weapons that are not carnal. They're mighty in God. We have been given the blood of Jesus to then turn and use it as a prayer of faith. The name of Jesus that is above every anxiety and every addiction and every name that is named We've been given the word of promise where at one word of God from that authority, things start changing. 
I want you to know who you are today. You are not feeble, and you are not this, this person that has to be drawn into every uh, evil desire. Come on, release your partnership to the power of God and be changed from the very essence of who you are. Change is possible because the authority of God is at work in us. This is so liberating to know that it's, it is not on me to make the change. It's on me to partner with God and let the authority of God be turned loose in those areas. I just have a, a deep conviction of God that throughout this year I need to use the word congruency and incongruency. And challenge us to, especially those of us who've been saved for years, don't get comfortable with an area of your life that's incongruent with Scripture. That's incongruent with the person you know you should be. What is at the foundation and on top of this word, what this message fits in this box called the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And I don't want to be that believer that is got all this alignment in these areas, but there's that area or those areas where I have rationalized my behavior, but the bottom line, it's incongruent. It's out of alignment with truth. And I have calloused my heart in that area, and I don't even feel the conviction like I used to and I don't realize that that is modeling for those watching me incongruency. And the message is, I'm more bought into the idea of change than I am the reality that that change requires. Do I have anybody in this room who says, not me? Not this year, not anymore. I want a life of congruency. Come on, I'm with you. I need it. I want to come into alignment. Give God a praise right there. We don't, we don't have the thought of just remaining as we are. We will submit ourselves to change. So as the worship team returns, let me, let me challenge us with this. I like the word commitment, but I think there's a better word for, it, for this context. And I want to exchange the word commitment for the word surrender. When I make a commitment, I'm still in control. I commit to doing this and this and this, and then when my willpower or my just I'm fatigued, whatever starts challenging me to not follow through on my commitment, suddenly there's a, a control that rested with me, and I can break the commitment. But when I surrender, I've given over control. And so when I'm weak or not wanting to stay in alignment, I don't hold a conversation with myself. I just keep obeying because I surrendered. It's the power of a pre-made decision. I've surrendered. I'm not going to come in and out of alignment with Jesus because... That says I'm in control. I'm going to come under submission and surrender. And still when there's imperfection and when there's sin, in humility, I will own it. I will repent. I will get back up and I'll keep walking on. But when I commit and I maintain that control, that's where I'm more subject to get comfortable with those areas that aren't in alignment. But hey, these are. And lordship is about giving over that control. I'm not the Lord of my heart and my life. I'm not the leader. He is. But I need to check myself in prayer that that's true of me. Is he really the leader or is he just the leader sometimes? 
Is he really the Lord, meaning in control, or is he just in control of some areas of my life? If you've never been saved today, you can be saved right now. And it takes the power of grace for you to be a new creation. But if you are saved, it takes transformation for you to keep changing. So today, the power in this room is the power for salvation, new creation. And the power of transformation is called discipleship and Christ likeness. I want you to stand with me right now. And I want you to close your eyes in God's presence. And first of all, to that group that would say, I need to be a new creation. I've never accepted Christ as my Savior. I haven't believe this in my heart but I do now and I need the grace of God I need the change that Jesus brings if you want to be saved in a moment I'm going to ask you to raise your hand this is for anybody in this room and those watching online come on this is your day this becomes a time and space where you cross that line of faith by the grace of God you ready say Pastor Ron I want to accept Christ as my Savior will you raise your hand right now come quickly get it up let me see it. I'm looking. I want everyone in this room who doesn't know Jesus to come into a saving relationship today. Number two, how many of you would say, I want to surrender fully to the transforming grace and power of Jesus. I want that authority to be at work in me so I will work out. I will participate. Here in a moment, I'm going to ask you to lift your hand. I'm telling you up front, I'm going to lift my hand because I want to be sanctified progressively. I don't want to get comfortable with where I am. I want to keep growing. Come on, right now, there is a tower called your life. Will you pay the price? Because if you will, then today you quit making any excuses. You don't blame your history. You don't blame anything from keeping that would keep you then from surrendering to paying the price to build your life. You ready? You say, I want to walk in that progressive transformation. Just lift your hand. That's you. Mine's up. Mine's up. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Now we need to do something here today. I'm going to ask this team to get ready to lead us in this song. And as they start singing over us the authority of God, the Bible says that when we lift our hands, it is a sign of surrender. If you want to do that, just lift your hands and you'll just see surrender happening like an ocean across this room, just waves of surrender. And the Spirit of God will respond when we come under Submission. Are you ready? Come on, lift your hands. Sing it with all of your heart. One word.